There's a lot of stuff that needs unboxing this month. Hey, look at that, Jenga. Welcome back to another episode of Stu's Reviews Tech Unboxing Hall. For those of you that don't know what this episode is all about, basically I save everything that has been sent to me in the past month to unbox in one massive haul. And those of you that aren't new to this will know that I don't always get some incredible tech. I also get some very unusual things as well. So we'll see what we've been sent today. But hopefully we'll get some good stuff as well. I'm gonna do a little bit of a test on everything just to see what it's like to give my base opinion on that stuff. Now, I was talking to Roger from Life of Tech, another YouTube channel based in the UK. And if you haven't seen any of his stuff, go and check it out. I'll leave a link in the description because his stuff is awesome. I was talking to him recently and he reminded me of like how much this unboxing type of episode has changed. This is probably something like the 30th episode, maybe more. I've been doing one a month for nearly two to three years. The first episode, I had like four items. I've got like 40 now, it's ridiculous. Anyway, times have changed significantly. It was just interesting to take a look back. Right, let's get started with the first parcel. The first parcel. We're starting with Yumi Digi Beyond Dreams smartphone. This could be interesting. Straight off the board, we're getting something that's pretty cool already and tech related so let's have a look at this this is the umidg bison pro this is obviously a rugged style smartphone actually looks quite nice it's got an inbuilt kind of rubbery back to it and then it's got this really kind of solid metal sides not as much screen as i'd like we've got a lot of bezel down here at the bottom and the top not bad not too bad at all um, feels relatively responsive, nothing particularly bad about that screen wise, seems quite sharp. Actually this is not bad, not bad, let's have a look at the camera. Selfie. Selfie quality is not hideous, I'm not the best there, but not too bad. Overall, relatively nice looking phone. I wouldn't be too disappointed with this. Pretty cool, great start. That is a nice looking phone, probably very, very relevant for people who need more rugged devices. <coughs> Unusual tape. Okay, that is unnecessary. There is a significantly large box. What is this? After lock, anti-theft alarm and GPS tracking device. This is interesting. 95 decibel alarm. Hmm, GPS and Wi-Fi tracking. This looks like an interesting little device. Oh dear, oh dear. So it looks to me like this goes onto your bottle cage and it gives you GPS tracking and a siren if someone tries to steal it. Why do I keep dropping that? I'm gonna have to give this a go. This sounds awesome, very cool. As people's bikes seem to be becoming more and more expensive and people are using things like electric scooters and electric bikes, something like that, which isn't always built into the whole experience, is invaluable. I've always thought that if you have an electric bike, it should have some sort of security system like that, but most of them don't. A massive parcel here. What have we got here? Broadcast boom arm and Limelight Dynamic Broadcast Microphone by 512 Audio. Ooh, hello. Uh, little carrying case there. Ooh, look at that. That's nice. Bit more retro, isn't it, than some of the stuff I've used. I like this, this is cool. Uh, what it sounds like, I don't know, obviously this is probably meant to go with that kind of cable connection. We've got this XLR on the bottom, that's rolling off already. Let's give it a go. Okay, I'm going to be honest here. This is the first time that I'm using a microphone through an XLR cable plugged into an audio interface. So I'm going to be a bit sketchy. Any advice would be appreciated, but one thing's for certain is that I'm actually very, very much in love with the audio already coming from the 512 Limelight, and I can't wait to get started with it. 
here. What is this? This is a smart home battery camera and solar panel kit. That is a massive box for a home camera. We've got on here a high fidelity two-way torque, active defense, whatever that is. We've got the solar panel, the Easy Viz. Easy Viz is supported by Lockheed as well, which is the insurance gives you a discount based on what smart security device you have. If you haven't seen that, they're not sponsoring this episode, but they're still bloody cool. I will leave a link in the description below if you want to check that out yourself. But ooh, I'm pretty certain they mentioned Easy Viz. The Easy Viz E Life Smart Home Battery Camera. Well, this is significantly smaller than I anticipated based on the actual size of the box. Okay, well this actually seems like a really solid little product. I like that. I think it's quite a neat little design with a little tripod through screw mount on the bottom here and it is powered by micro USB. Come on guys, micro USB, it's not needed anymore is it really? Let's have a look at what the quality is like. That is a bright light. I'm actually very impressed. Next up, another Amazon parcel. In this one, we have a Goo Photo. Is that not the Manfrotto logo? Right, that is the Manfrotto logo. What they put on the box there? Cheeky monkeys. Goo photo, it even sounds like man photo in like a weird way. Specifically, this appears to be for phones. Uh, it's kind of a little bit like a Joby grip, but probably better actually, because Joby is absolutely shockingly awful. Um, do you know what? The actual quality isn't hideous. It's actually pretty good. These legs seem all right. I don't know how long they'll last for with their bendiness. But they're a damn sight better than the Joby. All right, all right. And apparently it comes with a little automatic trigger here for iOS, so you can pair it up to your phone and take a photo. That's nice, I like that. That's pretty cool. That'll probably end up in the studio kit. Super EQS ones. I'm sure I've tried these before. Super EQ. Super. AQ. That wasn't needed, was it really? They feel all right, quite solid-ish. Little bit of a flimsy mechanism here, very similar to the kind of Beats, which I absolutely despise. I can say that now that I've left Apple. I absolutely hate Beats headphones. Never buy Beats. Micro USB. Micro USB, what, why? Okay, feel quite snug. It's not always a bad thing, relatively light. Actually, they feel pretty nice on. Uh, they do appear to have active noise cancellation, I believe. Ah, well, okay, that was a pleasant surprise. Actually, these are pretty good. I'd give these somewhere near a 6 to 7 out of 10. Uh, I would say the clarity might be a little bit muddier than what I'd want, but I'm actually very impressed with those. If I bought those, I wouldn't be disappointed. Next up. Okay, this is interesting. The GGMM D4. GGMM do uh, a bunch of different accessories actually for Echo devices that power so that you can use them wirelessly, move them around the house, which is pretty cool. I have always liked uh, GGMM stuff. I think they're pretty cool. Although there's one problem, I can't test this currently because I've still not sorted myself out with another Echo Dot since like, my last one broke. Which is annoying, but I like it. Simplest design, plug it straight on and you're good to go. It's also powered via the cable that comes with the Echo. So you can power it and then when you want, just unplug it and move it around the house. Top marks, this sort of thing is just, it just adds something that should be on Echo devices. I've always believed that Echo devices, especially things like the Dot, should have at least a very small inbuilt battery so you can move it around the house. What is that? We've got, oh wow, this is mad. <laughs> okay, we've got the Ecola Smart Table Lamp. By the way, that's spelt incorrectly. You've forgotten the U. Wow, 
quite like the design of that. I mean, I'd, what is this fresh hell? It's micro USB again. I'm not escaping micro USB today, am I? Ooh, that's relaxing. It feels, that's got a, it's just a natural shape. Quite like that. Ooh. Different colours. Like a flame setting, it's pulsing slightly. Ah, no, I like this. I think this is actually really quite nifty. I think that's cool. Right, that can stay there for a minute or two. Okay, I think it's only Bluetooth. It doesn't work with smart assistants, but still get a smart plug on that. Could work. I like that. I think that's really neat. A smaller parcel here that appears to be quite dense. Not what I expected. We've got a pair of headphones, the Aero Hex uh, by Aftershocks. Wireless bone conduction headphones. Okay, cool. Do you know what? I've not really had a go of that many bone conduction headphones. So this will be interesting. Be open. Yeah. Okay. Oh, they're sleek. Much sleeker than any other bone conduction headphones I've had a look at before. They are very sleek. Well, they're the best bone conduction headphones I've tried so far. Can you hear that? That is super loud in my ears, like super loud. The range is pretty good. It's not the best for bass, as you'd expect. It's not bad, though. I mean, very impressed. I'm very impressed. I'm very, very impressed. I still think bone conduction is better suited in technology like smart glasses, for example, where you can get audio feedback from your voice assistants. But those were definitely some of the best ones I've ever tried and they would definitely turn me. I would certainly consider using those actual headphones on a daily basis. What is that? That is the GameSir FA Pro Snowgon Mobile Cooling Grip. Okay. This looks interesting. Naughty game, sir. If you're watching this game, sir, you're using single-use plastic in your packaging. We all know that's bad. Okay, this could be very interesting. Oh, that is snug. That is nice. I like that. Okay, it looks to me like there is a fan on the bottom that also lights up according to this. However, it's not charged currently. I like this though. This is cool, right? This is a little joystick that I think just kind of attaches inside here. I can put it on my screen and it acts like an actual joystick. That'll act like a little finger on the underneath if you have a look. That's so cool. That is one of the most ingenious little devices I've ever seen. And then you can move it up and down dependent on where, I guess, in the game, the little joystick thing is. So shame there isn't one on this side, but that is absolutely genius. And this cooling thing is cool. There is a missed trick here though. It would have been good if that was powered by MagSafe. Instead, it's got to be plugged in at all times, which can be a bit annoying. However, on the flip side, it looks cool, but also it does an incredible job at cooling the device. Honestly, to the touch, this thing is freezing. It's like sticking your hand in a freezer. If you are a mobile gamer, then this sort of thing is going to be absolutely valuable to you. Onto to a big parcel now. Don't know what's on the side of this one. Yeber. Yeber V10 1080p projector. Big carrying case, but I always like it when these companies pop in their carrying case. Always good. Wow. Well, this looks pretty futuristic. That sort of thing is pretty cool. Look at that. The gigantic focusing wheel here. And as I'm moving it, it feels like some of the parts are a bit wobbly. As you can see. You can see that. It's sort of like wobbling as if the stand is a little bit loose. We'll just do do with a bit of tightening maybe it's an allen key tightening thing but it looks cool little brackets on the bottom 
let's give it a go. Well, I've got to admit, it's not the best quality that I've ever tried. It's not the worst, but it certainly could be better. It's quite noisy, and there's one fatal flaw. It doesn't have a tripod thread on the bottom, so I've simply got it balanced where it can project onto the wall. We are about halfway through now, and this episode has been supported by Free Trade. Free Trade is one of the leading investment apps in the UK, having been the winner of the British Bank Awards for the past three years in a row. Free Trade focuses on making investing in stocks and shares accessible to everyone by having transparent pricing and being commission free, meaning no hidden fees. It's super simple to get started, and with fractional shares, you can start by making investments as small as just £2 in massive companies with expensive share prices. Now, obviously, this is not financial advice, and it's important to note that what you do choose to invest can go up as well as go down. But if you wanted to give free trade a go, it costs absolutely nothing to sign up. And in fact, by clicking the link in the description below, you'll get a free share worth up to £200. And what's not to like about free money? But if you do end up with a share worth £200, you owe me a pint in the pub. Also, I want to give all of these guys a massive shout out. You guys are my patrons, and thank you so much for supporting me on Studio Reviews. I couldn't do it without you. Everyone who has supported in the past is supporting now and will support in the future. Honestly, thank you guys, and thank you in advance, I guess. Uh, we've got two new patrons this month. We have Mark Brown and Michael Howarth. So a massive thanks to you guys, and welcome to the Studio Reviews Patreon page, where you can get access to all sorts of stuff. Now, this is the part where I'd normally talk about the car boot auction. But this month, we are not running the car boot auction simply because we've got something else in the works coming very, very soon. Patrons will already know all about it. So stay tuned, keep being a patron because you're going to get exclusive access and massive discounts on something big coming. You should already know what I'm talking about. But if you don't, go and check the video over on Patreon. You need to be a bronze tier member ready for when it lands. But it's coming very, very soon. And it'll give you access to more than anything that has ever appeared in the car boot auction before. And I'm really, really excited to share it with you guys. Let's crack on. Okay, it's a wireless charging stand. Is it just one or two? No, it's, it's definitely two of them. Oh, it is a two pack of Chi. 15 watt fast charging USB-C fantastic well they're not bad and it's a two pack as well I quite like that seems to got lights on the sides well to show when it's charging I think that's cool not a great deal I can say about those other than the fact that actually they look quite nice It's the XDO Pico projector. I've had one of these already. Ooh! Okay, no, I haven't. I had their small one a couple of months ago, and I was absolutely blown away. And I, hold on a minute. And now I say small, I'm talking it was just like the top half of this. I don't know what the difference is between this one and the other one, though. But this follows suit. The design is really, really nice. Uh, it's got a very similar design aesthetic. We've got the touch panels on the top there. Oh, wow. Wow. That's got a, a remarkable size and quality. Wow. Let me, have, let me show you this. Like the smaller one that we had a couple of months ago, this thing performs way better than it should. But the thing that has really impressed me has been the sound. This thing is super loud for the size. Well, look, there is another projector from XDO that's phenomenal. Such a great little product for the size that this thing is. Genuinely, I'm so impressed. These guys, I've never heard of them before they sent me the last lot of stuff. They are making leaps and bounds in the projector world and other things as well, like with their small, tiny PC. But I've been blown away, mostly, by their projectors. That is so cool. So cool. Round of applause, guys. Still nothing weird. Well, 
Tona TC30 USB microphone condenser. So it's uh, USB-C, thumbs up for that. Well done, well done. Uh, it comes already pre-mounted. That is that is nifty. It's got like a little uh, shock absorber there. Uh, pop shield in the box as well. What a nifty little product that is. If you are traveling and you're doing a podcast or something like that, this kind of thing is absolutely invaluable. Uh, let's plug it in and give it a go. It's actually a nice sounding device and as part of a portable piece of kit, I can imagine it being really, really useful. Sound Peaks Air 3. I'm pretty certain I've tried most of the Sound Peaks headphones by now. I think I've said in the past that they've been really hit and miss. Some have been absolutely fantastic and others have left a lot to be desired. So inside here. Okay. Neat. Useless bit of plastic there, mine, but a bit odd. Uh, neat little package, very, very AirPod reminiscent. I can say AirPods now. Uh, very AirPod. Look at that, that is very AirPods. That is so AirPods, that's unbelievable. Oh my God, this is as close to an AirPod as you can get without being an actual AirPod. Not overly bass heavy, but that I think has a very nice range on it. <laughs> Again, I'd probably give this another 6 to 7 out of 10. I, we've had some very good headphones today. The bag. Box This is a new one. This is definitely a new one for Stu's reviews. A mouldy, uh, creamy custard, handcrafted mooncake from Xiaomi. That is, an, that is a new one. We've never been sent food before. When was that even sent? Apparently that was sent on the 16th. of September. Well, that was certainly different. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. We have the Treblab HD77. Uh, Treblab. Treblab do some very good headphones. I have used Treblab stuff before and they've generally been a real hit. Reminds me and looks a little bit like the uh, Tribit Stormbox that I like. Okay, it's got a little light on it, which is cool, little blue lights around. That's quite fun. I wouldn't say I'm massively, massively overblown by that. It is okay. It's got aux in and it's, got, it's powered. How's it powered? It's micro USB, I'm going to be disappointed. It's micro USB. Okay. Mm. All right. We've got another e cooler. I'm going to call it cooler because that is not how you spell cooler. 
this is a portable LED camping lantern. It definitely looks a lot like an egg. Wow, Jesus. That, that's unusual. I hear like a hissing noise. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, I'm less impressed by this one. That's a bit of an odd one that. I can't really get behind that one. I think I prefer the moonlight. Hmm. The Exa GT ones. We tried these last month. That's bizarre. That is the second time we've had the Exa GT ones. There we go. Okay. I don't expect it. We've got the Vast King M10 and an M10 docking keyboard case. Okay, so this is a tablet. Probably a budget tablet. I've never been overly impressed with budget tablets. I've yet to find one that I've kind of gone, oh, I like that. Other than the Amazon ones, they're pretty good if you obviously completely wipe them and put actual Android on it. But budget tablets tend to be a bit naff. So we'll see what the Vasking M10 is like. Uh, so, oh, I can tell you already, actually, it feels nicer than I anticipated. Ah. Oh. Huh. Okay. Uh, it's got a metal back there with apparently some bit of plastic there. The camera looks like quite a nice design. Design-wise, this is really nice, actually. <laughs> okay, I didn't expect that. Obviously, this all depends on whether or not this is actually budget or not. It's slow to start up. Do you know what? For an Android tablet, I'm genuinely pleasantly surprised. This is actually quite nice. I need to find out the price of this because if this is a budget tablet, I could actually probably see myself recommending this. Unusual one here that just says "Made in China." This is a Hoover, another robot Hoover. So as you know, I use currently the D-Bot stuff. This is a very different design. It's got kind of like a galaxy design on it. Uh, I do like that you can see inside the reservoir. Uh, that is nice and big as well. Uh, it does seem to have a slightly bigger area. Uh, the bottom looks interesting. It has no like brush bit here, just a suction. That's very interesting because, I, I mean, you can use the Ecovac stuff that I've got without a brush and I have done and showed you how that works, but the opening is much bigger. This is quite a small opening and it's kind of got these like rubbery bits to funnel the dirt into it from the brushes which you can attach here. So whether or not that will work very well, I don't know. I'm quite intrigued to give this one a go. Ugh. All right. Okay. Wow. We're ending on another unusual one. We're ending on uh, what would appear to be a Green Note cordless vacuum cleaner, the GSC 50. Green your home from now on. This is a very unusual uh, slogan. So that's all the parcels. Now let's give the rosettes out for the items that I think have won this month's unboxing haul. So in my opinion, in third place, I'm gonna go with this. I think this is cool. The Game Sir Snowgon F8 Pro. I think this is a really neat little device. And if you're a mobile gamer, then this sort of thing is gonna be absolutely ideal for you. I love the thumbstick, I love the fact it does all the cooling, I love the fan. Overall, just a fantastic product that seems to work really well. I've used GameSir stuff in the past and I've generally been pretty impressed, but this is on another level. Love it, think it's awesome. Second place, that is gonna to go to these. Best 
bone conduction earphones I've ever tried. And if that is the sort of thing you need, I wholeheartedly would recommend these now to anybody. I think they're awesome, really cool. Still wouldn't replace standard earphones for me, personally, in my own use, but for the right person, awesome stuff, really, really cool. But in first place, I think I'm gonna have to give it to this. Now, I don't know how much this Vasking M10 tablet is, but it surprised me. If it's a budget tablet, then I'm, I'd say this wins first place hands down. If it turns out to be 700 pounds, then it's gonna be struck from the records. But as it stands, I would, I've been really actually impressed by how good this is, uh, especially when compared to some of the Vasking stuff I've had in the past. It is budget, it's definitely worth a lock, especially if it comes on the same sort of price as the Amazon Fire tablets. I would probably say I'd go for this over those. It seemed a bit nicer. But that concludes this month. If you want to take a look at any of the stuff that we've been sent at all, I'll leave links to everything in the description. Obviously, I have the price of stuff over on there as well. But these are my top three items. If you've got a top item or you want to see anything reviewed individual, let us know in the comments. I'd be really interested in knowing which one you thought was the best item this month. But I think these three definitely win this episode. But that concludes today's episode. Remember, if you do want to get a free share worth up to £200 and you live in the UK, make sure you check out Free Trade at the links below using my link. But I'll see you back for another episode of Studio Reviews soon.